Mamas, welcome to Mental Health Mondays. I am Carrie Biscolonis with Reset Brain and Body. Here we are wrapping up the relationship series for this month and we are ending with a topic that most people are too uncomfortable to ask questions about and that is about intimacy in your marriage. What is normal? What isn't normal? What to expect? When do you need to ask for help? And let's talk about it. So, sex. First of all, what is normal? I want to first normalize the fact that 60% of couples in a marriage are only having sex one to four times a month. All right, 60% one to four times a month. 20% of couples are doing more than that. So more than once a week, 20% of couples. So the majority of couples, 80% of couples are having sex less than one time a week. So whether you fall in the 20% or the 80% camp, I just want you to first do a self-assessment. Okay, where am I? How do I feel about that number? What are my expectations? What did I think? And now can I give myself some grace, permission, forgiveness, just checking in with yourself. So just knowing first, like what is normal? What is average? Okay. Now, if you're saying, all right, I get it, and maybe I am normal, but it just still doesn't feel good enough, or maybe I'm within the average, but it still doesn't feel good enough, or there's something else going wrong here, then you need to ask yourself, and you and your partner need to talk to each other about, well, why is this important? Why is intimacy in our relationship important? Now, you could go and you could read books and you could read articles about why intimacy and sex in a relationship is important just in general, but it's really important to define why it matters for your specific relationship and what it means for your specific relationship. Understanding how your relationship changes when intimacy is at the forefront and when intimacy isn't really as important at that season in your relationship. And how you're connecting with your partner, how things feel from an emotional level, how things feel from a resentment level and from just an overall playful and engagement level. So why it is important in your relationship, looking at four different factors, connection, confidence in your relationship, pleasure with yourself, with your body, with your partner. And then also why is this person, your partner, your marriage versus just being in a roommate situation with them, just coexisting. So, after you are able to determine, okay, is our frequency of intimacy normal, average? How do I feel about that? Just giving yourself a baseline check-in. Well, then why is it important to me? I'm looking at factors like connection, confidence, pleasure, and what it means for how I define my partner in my relationship. Then I ask you to do three things with your partner. One is you got to talk about it. Truly, you have to talk about it. And this is important because you're setting expectations. So if your partner is saying, hey, you know, I feel like for me, three times a week feels feels good, that feels satisfying. And you're saying, well, you know what? Like, I'm barely showering three times a week. So <laughs> good luck, <laughs> right? Then you need to set those realistic expectations. And really coming at it from a place of, again, that why. Why is it important for you to be intimate with your partner because then you guys both are going to say, well, yeah, we're going to make this a priority then. All right. Once a week, we want to make sure that we're doing this because of our why, because it makes us feel better, because it's fun, because we enjoy being together in this intimate way, because it builds our confidence in our bodies and it's good to feel desired. Right. Or we'll say, we'll make it a priority twice a week or twice a month or whatever it is but you guys having a conversation about why it's important, why you then are gonna make it a priority and setting those realistic expectations with each other. So you're both on the same page. So often we see couples really struggling when they're not on the same page with it. When the expectations are so misaligned with one another and they're not talking about it and one person's constantly disappointed and one person's constantly rejected. And then again, that big R word that we've been talking about all month, resentment builds. And it's because we're not actually talking to each other about what's bothering us. So that's again why we start with the why, and then we say, okay, 
This is why we're making it a priority and here are the expectations around that priority. Okay, secondly, you need to address the obstacles. So if you're saying, okay, once a week, that's our goal. Well, what gets in the way of that? Sleep, work, stress, whatever it is, helping out your significant other to keep your guys' goal and to help each other meet that goal. So once again, you're not here to blame and resent your partner. Your partner is someone that you want to help succeed. So this is just yet another example of a goal in which you want, your help, you want to help your partner succeed. And so if that means you know that for your partner to wanna to be intimate and meet this goal, they need to work out every day because then they feel confident about their body and they're more willing to say yes in the bed, then great, help them achieve that. If you know that they need to get sleep or if you know that they need someone else to take over bedtime duty so that they're not feeling touched right before bedtime when the expectation is like, okay, that's when we're gonna be intimate. If you know that they need a night out with friends so that absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? Ways in which you guys can talk to each other and set up then different parameters to remove some of the obstacles or to help mollify some of the stressors that get in the way of reaching the goal. Things like health concerns as well. We know that as stress builds, age builds, certain things just physiologically get in the way of the ability to be intimate. And so making sure that you're meeting with the right doctors, mental, physical doctors, to help combat whatever might be going on. For women, hormone disturbances, especially as postpartum in that chapter, recognizing that as a woman is nursing, she may not have any libido and that's okay. And so again, going back to those expectations and then also recognizing like, well, when may there need to be some help with regulating things? Can that come through medication? Can that come through diet, exercise, sleep, whatever it is? But again, going back to the priority why, why is this important? It's not to just please the other person. There has to be a bigger reason than that. Okay, and the third thing is that there has to be emotional connection. Physical connection without emotional connection get, again builds that resentment. One person always feels like they're just doing this in order to please the other person and the other person always feels that. They feel when someone's just going through the motions. They feel when someone is just feeling indebted feeling like, oh, I just, okay, I just have to get this done, right? That just erodes emotional connection, which then, as we've been talking about, feeds into more and more issues in the relationship. So emotionally connecting, women we know scientifically need emotional foreplay in order to be physically intimate. And so how can you emotionally engage with one another if you have a goal of being intimate physically once a week, okay, how are you emotionally engaging leading up to that, that emotional foreplay? Are you going on walks together? Are you doing a puzzle? Are you talking without the TV or a screen in your hand? Are you cooking dinner together? Are you actually having family meals? Are you going on drives? Are you checking in with one another? Doing those emotional check-ins that we've been talking about where you're saying, hey, what do you need? How can I help you? How can I help support you? What's causing you stress that I may not know about? Everything builds to get us to this point. These are the foundational pillars of a healthy marriage. So three things, talk to one another to set those realistic expectations that are built from your initial why, addressing the stressors and the obstacles and helping each other overcome those things and building an emotional connection. All right. Anything else that you feel like comes up for you that is unique to your marriage, please drop in the comments, send us a DM. We want to keep engaging with you. Stay tuned. We have a very special new program launching so soon at Reset that is the Couples Intensive. So it's a 72-hour grand slam of a program in which we spend all of that time with a couple one-on-one -on -one, engaging in really good material and we just ask you commit just commit to each other commit to the program for three days take some time off get some babysitters get a hotel room and really commit and so you don't have to come to couples therapy for five years for two years for six months let's get it done and let's combat some of this stuff so that you can go back to being in the marriage that you want to be in so stay tuned with that
head over to our website if you ever want more details sign up for our newsletter so that you can always be in the know follow us on facebook instagram always looking forward to chatting with you more take care mamas bye bye